practice. So you think it can count. Now, what's a vector field? Now that we encounter this tree, a vector field is a two or three dimensional space in a function f that assigns to each point, that is f, x, y, or when we advance it, we encounter this tree for 3D, it'd be f, x, y, z, for two or three dimensional vector given by f, x, y, or f, x, y, z. It's generally a normal equation. Now, what that means is that with the vector field equation f, we are able to determine the position. I mean, the direction and magnitude of a particle in the space. For example, if there's a particle here, we are, with the equation, we are able to determine which point is it going and at what magnitude. Next slide. So, the standard notation for a vector field would be fxy equals to pxy i l. Those both are actually vectors following the standard, formation, uh, standard format. So, pxy i plus qxyj. And for those in 3D, the PXYZI, QXYZJ, and RXYZK. Alright, so now that we have a general concept of what a vector field is, let's try and do an example. This is an example of a vector field equation. Vector f, xy equals to negative y component i plus x component j. What this does is with this equation, we are able to sketch the vector field and since it's a two-dimension equation, it will be on the xy plane. Now let us try and solve this equation. Left. 
So that the arrow represents its magnitude. Now we have one zero, which gives us J. One zero J B up. Positive J. Next we have one one. At one one, the vector is negative i j. Negative i meaning to the left and j meaning upwards. Given as a resultant vector in this direction. And our last point is at one negative one, which is here. And this gives us the vector i j. Positive i to the left. Sorry, positive i to the right, and positive j up. For me, you get a general idea of what the graph should look like. Now let me show you the solution. As you can see, the overall graph should yield this kind of picture. If you use more points, you should get something like that. But if you want to use all the points, use your Mathematica and you should get this picture. All the arrows represent the magnitude and direction. Alright, as you can recall from chapter 14, when you differentiate the function, you should get the gradient vector of the function. And this gradient vector uses the same concept as the f that we did earlier. The one with the f equals to a vector. So, my friend here will do an example question where you are supposed to sketch a gradient vector field given a function f. Okay, so now we have an example. So, what we have to do is we have to sketch the gradient vector for the given curve fxy equals to x squared plus y squared. So what we do is we write the equation. And then we find the curve, the gradient. The gradient actually is the value of f the same. So it's actually f. So we can erase this. The value of f is equivalent to 2xi plus 2y Okay, so now we substitute the plots, let's put substitute the coordinates here, so 0, 0. So at 0, 0, you get 0. So you get here. So at 0, 0. Zero zero, you will get a zero. At zero one, that's one on the y-axis, you get two g. Okay. And at one zero, it's one. It's one. One zero, you will get two i. Okay. At one one, the point here, you will get two i plus two j. 
Okay? And at 1, negative 1, you will get 2i minus 2j. So, 2i minus 2j. So, yeah. so, generally, that's how you do it. But let's see how it's done by Mathematica. Uh, Mathematica is available online. Okay. So it's generally the same as you see all along the thing. When you plot all the points together, you will get the direction. And this is for the equation x squared plus y squared the function x. Alright, I hope you understand now how to do vector fields. And if there are any questions, please post it in the comment section and we will gladly answer your questions. Thank you.